Okay, so I think we'll get started. Uh, Anand's got some uh, connecting problems, so that's what he's trying. So, Anand is speaking to him. He'll be on soon. And uh, Amit has a internet issue. So, you want to get started? I think we can start. Yeah, well, I think as they join, and then then you know, like we will. Have, uh, so, hello everyone, and uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here and uh, welcome to today's panel discussion. Uh, how should businesses pivot post COVID-19? Uh, uh, this is uh, an effort as a part of our uh, pivot labs. Uh, pre yeah, I think now it's, it's connecting. Uh, yeah. Where uh, one gets to know the mentors of pivot labs and also get a sort of a peek into pivot labs from a mentor's perspective. Because, uh, uh, we have a very uh, unique and uh, very diverse panel of mentors uh, who are who have been uh, you know business leaders uh, who have uh, you know taken the startup journey by themselves uh, and they have they were also entrepreneurs before they became entrepreneurs uh, themselves. So with with a, such a diverse and a rich uh, mentor pool that. Uh, uh, we thought, you know, it would be a good idea to kind of, you know, understand uh, why and how businesses uh, should uh, really pivot and uh, how they can pivot. So before we get into the panel discussion, uh, let me introduce uh, Jinsev and uh, set the context uh, for today's discussion. So, uh, I'm Girish Hiramat and uh, I head the business operations at uh, Jinsev Bangalore. For those uh, who do not know Jinsev, um, uh, we are one of the leading technology business incubators in India, located in the heart of Bangalore city. Uh, like any startup, we too have come a long way uh, nurturing and growing uh, tech startups for over 10 years now. Uh, over the years, um, we have been playing the role of a catalyst uh, to a great success. Uh, we provide startups uh, and entrepreneurs the much needed tarmac for uh, the right takeoff, uh, like getting them started with the uh, entity setup, operationalizing their business, mentoring support, access, uh, giving them the access to seed fund through our own fund, uh, which is basically supported by uh, Department of Science and Technology and uh, angel investors or uh, uh, venture capitalists. And uh, we also provide, uh, we have, uh, we have over the years, we have built a good network of uh, market partners um, in, in India as well as overseas uh, through these market uh, uh, collaboration uh, contacts. Uh, if you, if uh, any startup is looking to launch in any of those markets, uh, it becomes, uh, we provide that easy access. So in other words, uh, we are like a startup coaching and Ment mentoring institute. So now uh, this is where uh, we have uh, conceived quite a few unique initiatives this year, uh, considering the current situations. Um, so let me now touch upon a bit about uh, why Pivot Labs. Um, and uh, so we, as we all know that the worst hit segments are early and uh, mid-stage businesses. And the entrepreneurs are facing uh, unprecedented difficulties uh, in their individual journeys. Today, most of the startups, even in our incubation centers, have kind of, you know, downsized their business. And also some of them have even shut shops. Um, and we as a company are no different. Uh, so we, we too have been hit hard. So times are tough and every business is kind of uh, compelled to innovate in all areas. It's important for entrepreneurs and startups to create operating models that would not only sustain during these COVID times, but also excel in future, uh, utilizing this opportunity. So today's panel discussion will uh, provide you that uh, a sneak peek on why and how businesses should pivot. So, uh, the Pivot Labs is a kind of a deep dive program 
which we have kind of put together uh, with with the help of uh, uh, our you know respected uh, mentors and panelists uh, who have as i mentioned who have been uh, who are accomplished uh, entrepreneurs themselves and uh, some of them are angel investors um this will help you to kind of consolidate your ip uh, reevaluate your strategy and rediscover the purpose so this session uh, will be an interactive one and uh, for an hour, for an over an hour so we'll keep everyone muted um and uh, uh, you can uh, if you have any questions please feel free to you know put it in your uh, chat window and we'll be happy to facilitate so um i think uh, uh, we hope that you will get the answers that you are looking for in today's uh, this discussion so without further ado i'll i'll kind of get started we have already shared uh, the details of the the panel discussion and the the profile the very brief profi profile of our uh, mentors uh, so uh we i am joined by uh, our mentors uh, starting with uh, dr pradeep desai uh, who is basically a, a design thinker and a, a an innovation specialist okay. and um, uh we we are going to you know seek some answers from him on how companies can really look at innovation uh then uh, i'm also joined by raj narayan uh, who has been a very experienced journalist okay and uh, he's been in this industry for the last over two decades so he is also an entrepreneur in healthcare so we will seek his experiences and learnings and how those can be applied to you know pivoting the businesses okay and uh, then we have amit tiwari who has been a, again uh, an experienced sales and marketing professional and today he runs a consulting firm where he helps uh, startups to kind of uh, basically raise their sales uh, that's his company name raise your sales so uh, he is going to also touch upon those aspects of you know building the how we can ramp up the revenues in these difficult times then we have anand kumar um, uh who is again a, a very experienced uh, uh, prof, uh, prof, uh, strategy professional and uh, who has run businesses in india and overseas uh, from in pharma and healthcare uh, you know um, uh, industries and he brings in a huge uh, 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 understanding and the kind of uh, knowledge in terms of you know the manufacturing setup uh, especially when it comes to these sectors Uh, so he will also touch upon uh, the the strategic uh, uh, parts uh, when it comes to you know if there are startups who are looking at you know creating those products and then you know developing them and bringing them to the market and finally i am joined by uh, nanjunda great uh, friend of ours and uh, uh, who is actually who has been uh, the architect of uh, pure labs and uh, nanjunda has been um, uh uh very active in the startup ecosystem for the last uh, over a decade and he runs a, a very unique program uh, at iim nsrcl um campus uh, called pitch tune and um, he is also on the board of various uh, uh, startups uh, so we will will pick his brain on how he has been kind of you know seeing this particular situation and how startups have uh, how startups should really you know pivot the, uh, during the current times so to start with um, so once again thank you uh, all of you um, our mentors as well as the the registrants who have joined to know our uh, mentors here now so to begin with manjunda uh, my question to you is that uh, you when in one of our discussions that you had talked about uh, that pivot labs uh, relevance or you know you had thought about uh, pivot labs in 2016 and uh, we kind of when we evaluated and we looked into the current situation and uh, 
then we thought you know it's it's a, it's much more needed now so how it was relevant then and how it is relevant now what are your thoughts okay well thank you gidan and uh, good afternoon everybody uh, well uh, at that point of time the whole idea of uh, pivot lab came from a fact that uh, there were uh, quite a few ips that were generated and in fact some of those companies had got some funding they had gone about some distance i think 2 to 3 years and uh, they had raised some funding once the funding was uh, exhausted uh, the founders ended up taking up jobs and the ips were jumped and this was in collaboration with one of the public institutions so ip was just lying idle there and the founders had taken up jobs with some large corporations and that's it so that is where we were talking about it why don't we look at pivoting it because whatever the business model that they got started at that point of time uh, perhaps was not uh, in line with the market reality and maybe because they also came from a largely research background and the whole uh, thought process beyond pivot lab at that point of time was about commercializing an ip so it really made sense and it still makes sense when you look at it from a commercializing of ips from various research institutions but in uh, today's scenario uh, we 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 are actually talking about uh, companies who actually got started with whatever the value proposition they had uh, in Nanjuna, I think uh, we have. Hello, Nanjuna, we have lost you uh, a bit there. I think. Uh, uh, no. Uh, is it possible for you to kind of re-log in? Uh, you are able to hear us. so it looks like he's lost connection yes yes no we we are unable to hear you if you can real uh, you can connect back yeah yeah so uh, while nanjunda joins us uh, again um, dr pradeep uh, now uh, he uh, nanjunda was talking about ip i mean especially taking the ip i mean monetizing the ip and uh, also when you have multiple uh, founders in the company that you know, like uh, then you know getting them to converge on the same vision um, so now considering that you know the the there are models you know when startups begin i mean especially most of the startups that we are referring to and talking about they began uh, their journey much earlier to pre covid and uh, they suddenly this uh, covid hit us like a bolt and uh, everyone is in kind of a disarray right so in this kind of a situation now whether it's a startup which is uh, the you know with one founder or multiple founders with differing views and all that okay and um, how one can also you know the how can one in one bring the role of a innovation okay and get to you know where you know get the both the founders and uh, to kind of think in the same direction what are your thoughts in in, in applying those kind of some of those innovation current times and then you know kind of you know creating a certain road map for the journey ahead what are your thoughts? okay uh, first of all uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity um this is a very hard time i mean this is uh, this was not even expected by any any um, you know anybody even thought about something like this to happen so when you talk about innovation right and in this context as uh, becomes even more difficult because even when you talk about innovation you actually know in a way in what direction you are going and what to innovate uh, but when something as you know a natural disaster or a calamity of this thing happens you are actually completely broken so what you have to do is pick your pieces 
and try to see what best you can do out of the pieces right now these are companies startups were started and they were fairly maybe fairly doing well or they were even actually doing very well but but hello yeah so uh, so what i what my view of the innovation here is uh, not so much on the technology front or the financial front but actually it's about you know how do you manage your partnership how do you manage if you say you know there are two directors or there are two founders and their views are not now aligned because of this sudden change uh, it calls for a very different type of thinking and uh, i mean i wouldn't use the word innovation here but really uh, getting alignment of what next to do and uh, and then based on that alignment you come you jot down your road map okay this has happened and therefore what can we do with this situation so the situation actually is the input to generating your road map so uh, so i would actually recommend uh, startups uh, that pick your pieces now you know this is exact this is the situation and nobody can can uh, run away from this situation what you could do in terms of if you talk about pivoting at this stage is if you already reached a particular level just see given the situation given the context what can you do in the in the best environment for example um for sure there is not going to be many people going to office at least for the next one year the real estate business is going to be really in big trouble especially for office space so so what what does that mean that means from a, from from people who want to work they have to get used to working in a totally different setup so you need to innovate around it so that your normal operations doesn't get affected right so there's a whole learning process that needs to be brought in the whole uh, how do you learn in this context like even you know seminars were given in front of people and now we are like we're talking like this and and it's so hard even to give a seminar because even for us because we used to do eye contact we, we like look at the people and try to make our statements and see how it is but it's so hard now so if you ask me this is these are the points that you need to pick and innovate around can you still be able to have focus of in your company to what you want to do and maybe what you were doing in the past are become very irrelevant so you need to just say yes it has become irrelevant now and therefore we have to move on and that's where the pivot comes and the pivot actually can be in different different spaces it can be financial because it has a financial impact now it can be people because there is a resource constraint it can be material you may not get the right material because of all the issues so there are a whole lot of things that you need to innovate and it doesn't happen the innovation doesn't really happen in one space and if you start to put all of this together you may be able to come up with a road map and i don't see really for the next year or even one and a half years things would change dramatically from where we are so this is my personal view yeah thank you i i, I think you you actually summarized uh, the whole pivot labs uh, program uh, so beautifully uh, because uh, it's it's not about uh, innovating uh, innovation in terms of just technology or you know any of uh, that particular aspect but you know you need to look at every aspect of your business and then you know how you kind of really change things and you know, bring innovation in whatever smaller in small way and then that will you know kind of you know uh, impact your business uh, right. road ahead so uh, now uh, you also talked about a very uh, very crucial and interesting point uh, which is the people point and uh, so i we we have raj uh, who has been a kind of a leadership coach and he is kind of you know helped organizations and startups where you know um, people have been kind of you know uh, nurtured to kind of think in a certain direction which basically helps the entrepreneurship uh, vision um, so raj from that perspective uh, and also you you have been a startups so can you throw some examples um, uh, from your perspective and how really one needs to look at this not only from a founders uh, if there are multiple founders 
but even from the team perspective how do you get everybody along because when you think of a new direction that can uh, you know suddenly it can uh, bring some kind of uh, imbalance okay. so how do you get everybody and then you know take this forward yeah uh, first of all thanks girish and uh, thanks to jin sir uh, for uh, having me here so uh, i'll just say a couple of things before i step into that territory one uh, girish i'm just picking up from where you uh, where you said introducing us you said uh, the panel you can listen to us and maybe you can find the answers but i don't guarantee that uh, what i would guarantee is you might find the right questions to ask yourself correct yeah because and i think right now i think again now i'm uh, picking up from uh, dr desai who said there is one thing it's one thing to pivot on the financial side or on a on a on a on a uh, business side all of these things i think the key pivot here here is our behaviors which means what are we in this for what is my purpose or what was my purpose when i started this venture what is my purpose is the purpose the same today if so do my colleagues my co-founders or people who are in my leadership group do they share that purpose these three become extremely critical here because uh, like they say there is a saying that says when the going get tough the tough get going in this case what happens is i'm just like tweaking it a little bit and saying, saying that when the going get tough that's when the skeleton start tipping out of the cupboard things were going well so everything is anki tori suddenly i mean you have uh, covid and don't forget i think nanjunda also mentioned that i mean it's not as if covid was the one which sort of destroyed all of us things were looking a little bleak even before covid and covid sort of uh, completed the job in a way uh, yeah so i'll give you one example uh, which is my own um, so we were actually we are in the business of uh, providing elderly care when i say care it doesn't mean that uh, i am providing nursing assistance no care is for the elderly anybody over 65 for people living alone the people who are i mean just a couple staying alone they need care for a lot of things even to go to the shop and uh, bring some stuff or to go to the uh, electricity uh, and pay the power bill maybe they are not internet savvy there are so many things so care involves that entire continuum of helping somebody go through with their life a disease is just one of it we started from the point where we said okay we will certify them we will give them employment we'll do all of this when covid struck we had this weird situation where we had caregivers on our bench we couldn't send them to their places because covid social yeah. distancing so what do you do uh, so suddenly we were faced with a scenario where the demand was there the supply was there both of them were not coming together as simple as that so what do we do we sort of ran a quick campaign we made personally made phone calls to all the people and said how many of you would be happy to have that person stay in your house till this goes away so if you remember initially uh, i mean if there is there were this 15 days spells we started in march and then middle april and then end april and then may and then the lock uh, unlock down started so believe me we were surprised because we had a 100% record every person to whose house the caregiver was going they were happy to have that person at home so for us that was surprising we just changed that around we said okay now that we see this is this as a key element so can we forget about this uh, training and other stuff and say okay whoever wants employment who are unemployed today uh, come to us we'll see how we can help you uh become a caregiver maybe not with the uh, requisite medical or uh, uh, healthcare background but at least with the basic minimum understanding of how to take care of the needs of senior citizens so that was a quick turnaround and it was just the behavior so maybe we'll come to that later the idea here was i have an idea i am stuck with it for so long i find it difficult to let go of it can i first let go of that idea i think that's also the gist of how i understood dr desai's perspective so for me that's the key here can i let go of an idea because only when i let go can i catch on to something else so i'll i'll stop there and then we'll come back i guess 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, that that's a great uh, insight that you have shared. That you know, like uh, many a time, we get so obsessed and attached to the things that we have been uh, doing. Uh, it's basically, you know, it boils down to letting go something, okay, which is actually not working, right? Um, which we kind of, you know, face this in uh, sales and marketing. Um, um, so, uh, Amit. Uh, now you know uh, in sales we are all kind of uh, used to certain you know framework uh, certain you know kind of processes and daily kind of you know certain um, regimen okay which is kind of um, very difficult to change especially when in b2c okay it's it's somewhat uh, you know it's doable to an extent but uh, especially when it involves a b2b kind of a, um, Uh, customer segments okay, where the uh, sales cycles are a bit longer, and you would have got used to doing the things in a very uh, one set fashion, right? So now, uh, with with uh, since you have been kind of helping uh, startups uh, in terms of you know kind of uh, rethinking their sales strategies and also you know kind of uh, get back to their kind of old. Uh, revenue generating ways so what are your kind of thoughts on you know why why and how they should really pivot when it comes to the the, the sales or in in terms of revenue generation you you're on mute you're on mute let right on mute yeah sorry uh, thank you and uh, you know it's a wonderful opportunity to interact with all of you here uh six months back I never imagined that the situation would be there and we are all talking about it uh been over two decades of a through and through sales guy i never imagined that six months i would just be sitting at home and interacting with uh, customers and people who i have not known i have not seen i am not able to you know meet in person uh for me to sit in office even for a couple of days used to be a bit difficult job you know always traveling and i think most of the sales guys have been facing this issue uh but but that's a reality today you know and see today we are all talking over uh, air meet we are talking over zoom and so on uh, i've worked with i'm working with few clients here where um, we are also working with healthcare sector and we're talking to large hospitals uh see the perception also has changed from the customer point of view so many of these doctors who are running you know in the healthcare sector whom we are uh, working with uh, they are running their own clinics or large hospitals uh, where we are selling tech they would have in the novel circumstances expected us to go in person do a demo of the software and uh, you know talk the commercials shake hands meet in person and you know work around uh, but today we are doing everything remotely we have done installations outside india we have done installations within india without even moving out of our respective homes forget about office and many of our uh, people from deployment are doing it from different parts of the country you know they they have kind of taken uh they they've gone back to different parts saying that since we are working from home so i think there is also a change both from the customer perception where they are also now becoming adapt and comfortable with the situation that uh, yeah this is the norm and this is how it's going to be i may not see a person or a, or a sales person in in person i may not be able to interact with him in person but i will have to do things remotely there is a scare factor there is always that question mark where people say would it happen would it not happen but yes however nonetheless i don't foresee that this is going to stay for too long uh, the very fact that the first time unlock happened people start rushing out you know end of the day we are all social beings uh, so i i am not in uh, line with the term of uh, social distancing it's more about physical distancing than social distancing because socially we are so connected that we are, we cannot be away from each other right we are socially not away we just physically away and uh, today we are selling uh, apartments flats online we are selling cars online uh, that's there for a certain segment but i would still if i have to buy a car would like to go feel sit inside do a drive or if i'm buying a house i would still like to go see feel you know see a, a model house so this is a transient phase where technology has played a larger part and it's become tough for the sales guys uh, i give workshops i'm giving a workshop tomorrow and it's so difficult because i'm not going to see people in in person as yeah. dr pradeep also said you know i to i contact is not there i don't even know they might be fiddling with their mobile phones while i'm while i'm giving uh, the workshop or they might be you know chatting elsewhere just been there you know 
so uh, so it's it, it's difficult but then we are adapting they are adapting and i think that's how it's going to work uh, customers becoming price conscious rather cost conscious for their side so that's another pressure with the sales guys are going to give so so it's a mix it's a dilemma but as you rightly said b2c is adapted e-commerce is really flourished but when it comes to b2b it's relationships it's your price it's your value your v2 value to your price or value to cost perception has to be greater than one and that will that will be something that will keep you you know floating uh, in these circumstances so it, it's it's difficult but it's challenging but i think many people are adapting and uh, uh, as uh, mr raj also mentioned about the elderly you know the gen, uh, the the senior citizens i am seeing them adapting so well right so i have certain friends who are staying outside india their parents are here and they are like getting things from big baskets they are managing their household they are fine uh, they are consulting online with doctors things are working out it's not bad but yes this i don't foresee this lasting long and should not last long we have to get back to what was 6 months back with with without the chaos and without the uh, you know the the mud that we are in Uh, I, I think there are some more things I'd like to talk, and I'm sure uh, as we proceed, we will speak about it. So, sure. no, I, I definitely agree, and I, I don't think uh, anybody after the the initial honeymoon period of one or uh, two months of this lockdown, and nobody wishes to kind of uh, continue this uh, because everybody would like to kind of uh, get back to the 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 old ways, right? Uh, but i i guess uh, uh, these times have brought in a new mix or new perspective uh, that you know because earlier we never uh, we could have never dreamt that you know we would be facing this kind of a calamity and we should be ready with uh, some kind of a plan b or a plan c kind but now what this uh, whole situation has taught the the humanity is that you know i think there is the need for a uh, plan b okay or there is this need for pivoting okay so what we are talking of is basically yes adaptation is something that we try and do it but you know when we talk about you know making this adaptation in such a way that we kind of start thriving in it okay we kind of you know uh we don't really think of those blocks anyway and i think you know we create a certain new path and where we it becomes quite where we don't really see any kind of barriers and we start moving smooth okay that's the way i mean while there the, the things will change and uh, definitely i think it may be take about 6 months 1 year whatever it is but for us uh, as a businesses as startups as entrepreneurs every day is precious so how do we kind of create certain those uh, pathways certain uh, you know kind of directions which will you know sustain us also put us in some kind of a new direction right so uh, so the thing is that you know it's good to know that you know there is this some adaptation has taken place and uh, the people are kind of you know responding to it and that's a good good thing when we kind of when businesses pivot so now i think we will will kind of uh, take anand's perspective because you know while we are doing this kind of a thing like uh, as amit mentioned there are businesses are pure uh, they are adapting right so there is a kind of a, while you are adapting but you also need to kind of you know that is maybe a kind of a subconscious pivoting right but how do you kind of when you are pivoting what kind of strategies that you kind of you know continue with where that whole pivoting process becomes a sustainable okay. so that you know the next one year you have created a model which basically would have given you certain new revenue streams it would have given you said it would have opened up opportunities in certain new customer segments okay which you wouldn't have thought of because earlier you were in your comfort zone okay and then you know like okay so now how do we thrive and then you know so what are your thoughts you know in terms of 
the strategies or certain kind of approaches that you know while we are doing this how do we kind of make it the whole thing sustainable I think that's a very good question. Uh, so thank you once again, Jinsev, for the opportunity. Um, so I can probably correlate to just two things which I'm actually going through. Well, three things. Um, so, the, so the first one is um, it's a company. Um, again, full disclosure, my wife is one of the inventors of this. So, so what they've been doing was, you know, for a while they've been looking at voice, right? So they were looking at voice and using voice to um, send, do sentiment analysis and figure out how good a customer service function is doing, right? And they were primarily targeting banking and financial services and things like that. Now, when COVID struck, um, again, many of the orders dried up. So what they quickly did was they looked at it and said, hey, can we look at using voice? We're already doing voice. Can we now look and see if we can do a point of care diagnosis tool by catching dry cough because one of the challenges with COVID is that you will have a symptom of dry cough, right? So use the same voice engine, you know, modulate that to actually see if they could capture dry cough as a precursor for a symptom in terms of COVID. So that's one thing they've been able to successfully do. That's one company, again, part of the Indian Institute of Science. That's okay. one thing. The second thing is where I'm, I'm actually very much involved with, uh, where we were working for a while on point of care devices for healthcare, right? Primarily looking at Asia and Africa, where you know typically the healthcare footprint disappears uh, once you head 60 kilometers anywhere, right, radius, you know, and dips significantly, right? So we were looking and seeing, can we use a mobile phone with its camera, you know, to actually do point of care disease diagnostics, right? And so we we were, the whole of last year, in fact, we ran eight trials. We were already, uh, we've been, we've raised significant money as well. And we were ready for the second round of funding to start uh, in March. Right. And this was in anemia and malnutrition and COVID kicked in around February. Right. So term sheets which were made got pulled out. Right. So they said, you know what, for the next. And if you talk to some of the big guns, JVP and others, they're saying summer 2022 is when they think things will get normal. Right. So that's that's uh, again one of the perspectives. So then we looked at it and said, hey, you know, anyway, it's a point of care device. Is there an opportunity where we can now see if we can do antigen testing for COVID, right? So again, but then the research and everything else is going to take time, right? So we looked and saw, hey, are there companies in South Korea or companies in Switzerland or companies in China who would want to look at providing that technology on a licensing agreement? China was ready. Indian government was not ready, right? Again, due to many factors. So then we had to look at Korea. Right. So there was a Korean company who said, OK, we can license the technology. And we quickly pivoted from doing malnutrition anemia to now doing point of care antigen IgG and IgM testing, uh, antibody testing for COVID. Right. So that was, you know, so in a sense, um, how do I look at it? If I take a step back, I would say it's about survivability. Right. The conditions are such that now I need to figure out how do I survive? So if I have to survive, uh, incoming has to be greater than outgoing, right? In a broad sense. So how do I make that model work is something I look at. And then what I also do is I think about it and say, okay, will this actually be just, a, a, um, how do I call it, a spike? Or will this continue for some time, right? Now, all intents and all kinds of trends seem to suggest that it's going to continue for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to kind of coexist after some time, like how we coexist with the flu and other things. Right. Sure. So then, you know, the, the model. So so you kick into survivability and then you kind of figure out, does this make sense for me to continue doing? If it doesn't, can I quickly sell that technology to somebody else or license it to somebody so that I can again be afloat? Right. So that's something we've looked at now. Now, the third model I will talk about is um, so we're also working on mental illness. Right. So so one of the MVPs we were looking at doing is um, is an eight month model. 
right? Now we know eight months is a very long time to survive, right? Uh, especially when you're paying large amounts of money to data scientists and others. So then can you constrict that MVP to an MVT maybe, a minimal viable test of maybe a few months, right? So that you can go show that in the marketplace, get a proof of concept faster, so that you can then see if there is a collaboration opportunity so instead of you building your own product, now what you do is you see if you can co-build a product with an alpha customer, right? And then see if you can take the product to the market together, right? So three types of models we've kind of experimented. Unfortunately, all that um, impacted uh, me personally, but uh, that's been an interesting game so far. Right. So so I've always looked at it from an agile perspective. And, and as you probably know, cash is king for all startups, right? Irrespective mm -hmm. of what we say. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do we survive is the question. Right. And some of those things we've done is we've actually shut down our offices. Right. Well, we didn't shut it down right away abruptly. We said, hey, some of you work from home, see how it goes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then slowly we've kind of moved to a situation where we've said, guys, please work from home. Right. And what we will do is we'll use Jira, we'll use Trello, we'll use a lot of those collaboration technologies if we need to. And we'll see how we can catch up. Maybe instead of a stand up every day in the morning, we'll actually do a stand up on Zoom, maybe for 10 minutes. Right. And that's again, it's it's a survivability thing, you know, and that's kind of kicked in. So, um, yeah. So those are my points. Of course, supply chain disruptions. A lot of issues are there uh, in that game, but um, we'll talk about that as we continue the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's uh, you, you. You said it you know, very well. Uh, it's, it's about you know uh, the survival uh, survivability, right? Um, I like the fact that you know uh, the incoming has to be greater than uh, incoming should be greater than the outgoing. Right? Um, I, I think, you know, that's where uh, we'll have to kind of start looking at certain new ways. I mean, some of the examples that you have quoted, how swiftly they are able to kind of look at some of the opportunities that were lying around and then, you know, create a certain uh, faster uh, go to market kind of approach and then, you know, tap into it and then create certain trials there and then, you know, see whether what's working or not and then, you know, so it's all about that agility. Uh, it's not about getting stuck with, uh, with something that, you know, like earlier day, earlier days or pre-COVID, we had the luxury of, you know, sitting and then, you know, kind of uh, uh, breaking our head why this is not working. And I think, you know, one of the things that you brought out, it's not about just sitting and then, you know, wasting time. You quickly, you know, keep moving and then checking around the opportunity. Start. Uh, creating, co-creating. Uh, co-creation is also something really many a times that we miss um, because we, we kind of think that, you know, we know everything. Uh, uh, we can do this. But uh, I, I believe uh, uh, I'm a great proponent, proponent of uh, co-creation uh, because that's where uh, one of this, uh, our whole effort that you all joining us uh, we, uh, in so doing this, it's one bigger uh, testimony or example of this co-creation for the benefit of the startups who are currently, you know, in that kind of a bit of a uh, confusion state. So uh, I think it's it's uh, entrepreneurship is all about being resourceful also. Uh, uh, I think it's sometimes when you are uh, when you are stuck somewhere. I think we just need to step up or step out and then, you know, ask somebody that, you know, and just like as Raj mentioned, it's uh, about asking questions. The answers will automatically happen. But I think, you know, asking questions, going and seeking out that help. So I, I now kind of, you know, um, I, I request each one of you to kind of, you know, uh, come out and maybe if you have certain thoughts to kind of reflect on what our co-panelists have said. Uh, so, uh, Nanjunda, I think we missed your uh, that uh, part, you know, about the relevance of pivoting uh, in the current times, right? So, while we have touched about, but I, I would like to hear from you how you are looking at it and what can be done. Well, uh, 
thanks and yeah apologies for the connection issues that i couldn't rather i was continuing to speak and none of you could hear so while uh, good to get the perspective of uh, all of you and uh, i pretty much uh, agree with uh, all of it uh, i personally do believe that uh, uh, we will possibly see the recovery in uh, 22 uh, and, uh, and 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 everything else but uh, uh, what i I wanted to say earlier was that uh, how should businesses look at pivoting given this whole scenario? I think we should start looking really local. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, biggest. Uh, what do you say? A smoke screen that uh, unfortunately much of the startup ecosystems have driven to the startups that how soon, how fast can you grow, scale, and become a unicorn? Right. I mean, uh, people have been put on a false ride and uh, chasing a, f a false dream and uh, and a lot of money is also been poured into it. And uh, if people don't learn now with all this situation and COVID, I don't think they will ever learn then. So in many a sense, I think we really have to thank this scenario to understand that we really have to uh, look near, look around and look really local, because if you are able to create value around locally, then we will obviously be able to create value and it will start growing bigger and bigger. So, and uh, when I say look local, we obviously have to see if we can work with people locally, we can collaborate locally so that we don't have to own and control all the resources, which we actually don't. And neither do we have to look at uh, uh, far from uh, cheaper resources like we used to, a lot of companies still depend on getting things coming from other parts of the world, uh, China, and uh, trading was one of the big businesses, in fact, uh, right? And many of the startup ecosystem where we have seen startups talking about doing, building a big venture, primarily they were doing trading, you know, importing stuff for cheap and rebranding and selling. So I think we are getting more real now. So when we talk about pivoting people, this is the time to look local and uh, strengthen our local realities. And also probably we have to sensitize it, which we have actually shut it out. We have closed ourselves. So probably each aspect of what Raj was talking about is how do we see the real value from uh, as co-founders and uh, how Pradeep was talking about is being real, not just innovation for sake of innovation, but being real and creating real value. And uh, what Amit was talking about was, again, a value aspect and also uh, more a near term goal of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, keeping a revenue flow and uh, uh, what Anand was talking about is utilizing and maximizing the current scenario more than uh, trying to reinvent what we have and how do we actually look at uh, getting better value out of it. And it is best possible local. So I think my approach is that let's go local. And that's the best way we could possibly pivot and sustain and survive also. Yes, yes. Uh, you are able to hear me now? Okay. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, uh, we, we kind of, you know, touched upon uh, certain uh, key essence of uh, the need to pivot. And actually, I mean, like what, what has emerged from this minutes. I mean, like it's, it's actually, you know, as Dr. Pradeep mentioned about how we need to kind of about innovation in every small aspect of it. And uh, Raj, you brought out the, the behavioral thing. It's all about you know, how do we kind of uh, founders and as a, as a team, we kind of, you know, so suddenly um, calibrate our behavior. Uh, so that, uh, because customers have already kind of calibrated and responded. So you, you are able to kind of see that those uh, uh, certain very visible opportunities. Uh, there are also certain uh, not so visible. So you you kind of, you know, get your the behavior rallying around that. And uh, Amit talked about the adaptation. Um, and uh, then the Anand mentioned about survival, survivability and co-creation. Um, and uh, Nanjunda is kind of, you know, talking about value creation. So 
I think this is actually the 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 real framework of you know pivot uh, that we kind of when we even initially when we researched um, that you know when we thought of the, the next four weeks how we are going to work with those startups and the entrepreneurs uh, where we will be we will I bring out these aspects and then you know dwell deep into it. in a kind of a very structured fashion so that uh, these entrepreneurs and startups and founders are able to develop a kind of a blueprint for the next 30 days or a 60 day or a 90 day kind of thing. so what will this will give them a kind of a um uh, a road map where they are kind of you know looking at those opportunities that are lying around rather than you know like as nanjuna thinking elsewhere and how do we kind of get the whole team and the everybody to kind of converge on one particular few you know paths rather than each one taking in to different direction um and also there there is a kind of a an external perspective that they get to hear so this is a great opportunity for all those uh, you know entrepreneurs and startups to kind of you know um participate in pivot labs and do this so nanjuna i mean can you kind of you know elaborate this a bit and see what are the kind of the, the how the next 3 weeks or 4 weeks are going to be while i mean i would like to also add that you know uh, tomorrow we have another very interesting panel discussion where uh, all our cash kings are going to be on that particular uh, uh, you know panel Uh, where they will touch upon uh, the finance part of it how do we kind of see you know whatever they have currently uh, how they can maximize that part so that we will anyway uh, you know go in detail tomorrow but i think in, with respect to these aspects now nanjuda can you throw some more light uh, on you know how do we how an entrepreneur should see these next three weeks uh, with each mentor okay well uh, to start with uh, uh, girish i think uh, it's a uh, great step uh, that you came in with uh, to say that uh, it's not going to be costed or there is no upfront cost to the startup to come into it and given this whole uh, scenario that uh, we are trying to get uh, startups who are post potentially winding up or already have decided to wind up and they just heard about pivot labs and may think about giving it another shot so they don't really have to worry about it that there is no upfront cost to them when i say upfront cost they don't really have to pay anything they just have to come for this so that's a biggest step right and that's a biggest motivation for them and that's a big promise and that is something you've made it and you facilitated it so uh thank you and also congratulations on a big step on that so uh, having said that uh, if a startup could uh, Uh, come forward if they have already chosen to wind up and if they want to give it a shot at it so uh, there are various scenarios right they may have uh, even uh, you know like raj mentioned in his you know in his uh, opening statement that uh, uh, there are a whole lot of scenarios and co-founders uh, i mean the, i think some line he mentioned that difficult times bring uh, sorry raj i'm not able to quote you right so so uh, so in those difficult times uh, bring our original self and how we you know uh, it shows our inner strength as well so that is where some of the uh, weaker co-founders try to jump the ship and uh, some of them will try to hold on and lead further so obviously we will have startups who are potentially led by one or only few of the co-founders and not all of the co-founders and which is still a welcome here and uh, to uh, uh despite that uh, some of them even be funded startups and uh, they may have uh, money in the account but uh, the investors would have frozen it uh, for obvious reasons that there is that business model that they got started with is not moving so they have been held up so in uh, all these kind of scenarios the whole uh, idea of getting this kind of a uh, if i can put it a star mentor group to come together to uh, take uh, you know take up their problems and look through it and uh, spend time thinking through and making them think again and uh, look at how to go about it 
is a big step and uh, how the whole thing works is that uh, uh, once we start getting their applications we've already started getting their applications it's cross 10 applications if i'm right so uh, uh, we are getting those details which also suggests that where they have been what was their past revenue and when it stopped and if uh, we've also asked them if they realize where they have made some mistakes the idea is that you know in the last six seven months they would have had time to retrospect about where things would have gone wrong and what is their mistake and such so idea is to capture all those things and as they articulate that will also help us narrow down to see which mentor can be the right mentor for them in this effort but uh, having said that one definite effort is that we are not trying to put them to a mentor who comes from the same domain or enterprise uh, uh, background uh, primarily because uh, we want to look at the other uh, aspects of it uh, the softer aspects of it because what is essential is that uh, the mentor does not necessarily bring the domain baggage because he, the mentor can potentially drive them to uh, look at things openly so we will uh, obviously try to get them to work with mentors not necessarily coming from the same background just to bring the diversity of thought and experience which obviously the mentor brings in but uh, again, having said that, it's not that we are going to put those startups with, with one mentor alone. We will have one lead mentor and we will have one support mentor or a associate mentor. And uh, the idea being that that again brings an element of diversity to the whole approach. And uh, at the same time, while we have uh, uh, 10 mentors here, we are uh, looking at each mentor to be a lead mentor for a maximum of four startups so that uh, they don't get over committed and uh, they don't get drained either so that there is an option of all of them to play a different role here and at the same time uh, it's not that each startup gets to work or uh, you know get the benefit of only two mentors they are always welcome to uh, reach out to the other mentors and in fact uh, each of our lead mentors will also be looking at what are those trends and they proactively can reach out to the other mentors to say that listen these are my startups why don't you have a look i would like you to have a chat with them so uh, each of us will be having this conscious effort in getting the maximum value to that startup so uh, having this kind of a model uh, i don't think a startup can ask something more but it uh, this process is designed to make sure that they get better of it and uh, at the same time uh, uh, if uh, uh, one spends a little time on the website where we also shared the whole uh, uh, process and uh, 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 the flow uh, where we have talked about how do we look at it and what are the criteria to evaluate them and uh, understand the startup the founder and the business so uh, each of those things from that uh, four step methodology so that will also give a lot of ideas to them and if they don't understand they can always reach us and we can talk about it and uh, uh, you actually girish have already mentioned that this whole effort is to drive towards uh, working towards a short term goal of 30 days 60 days and 90 days uh, milestones uh, so the whole effort in this next three weeks would be or the three weeks from the time of starting would be that with the mentors the startups will uh, uh, it's not that mentor will tell the startup that listen this is what you should be doing it's collectively arrived with the startup and the startup founder rather arrives at it with the help of the mentor that this is the milestone for 30 days milestone for 60 and 90 days and uh, which is also essentially getting to the point that we uh, your plan B has to be now, right? That referring to that, what can we do now? And if we have to survive now, we have to survive today. So that is why we are forcing down to 30, 60, and 90 days. So I hope I've covered everything. Otherwise, if you can fill in something. Unmute, Girish. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. So uh, I think you you have covered the whole spectrum, and uh, it, it must it, it gives the complete detail uh, of the you know the program uh, and how startups can kind of it's not about you know giving them some kind of a ready textbook that you know here it is and then you have all the answers. 
so it is about you know uh, sitting with each one of them and then you know going into details of their current challenges and then you know kind of identifying the problems and then you know kind of coming up uh, also picking their brains in to kind of what kind of solution could really work better where we give our perspective so uh, and also like as anand mentioned earlier that you know it's also about you know uh, opening their eyes for the kind of opportunities in and around their certain existing products or solutions okay so uh, i i don't think you know so far anybody uh, any uh, incubation center or any institute may have come up with this kind of a program on this scale because it's not about just one individual mentor i mean of course jinsav alone couldn't have pulled it off um, without the support and the guidance and the contribution of each one of you so we are really grateful for that you know because uh, and you you mentioned you brought out that particular aspect that you know uh, it's not about you know where the startups need not really think about that you know okay so many mentors are coming and they are putting investing in these many hours then you know the cost could be higher it's completely free okay so uh, we want them to succeed we want them to take this benefit yes i mean like we see them uh, if this really works out good for them and their uh, ventures and uh, we will be happy to kind of uh, uh, partner with them in for their future you know uh, strategies or directions so that is the whole you know uh, the vision and the intent so uh, now coming back to uh, raj i mean earlier you want to sorry just one yeah. last thing yeah uh, this whole effort also gives opportunity for those entrepreneurs who in the pivot labs to collaborate with any of the mentors even in the longer terms of course provided the mentor also agrees with the engagement but they have an opportunity to engage with any of the mentors so that's one aspect very very very, very, very so raj uh, now i i come back to you because you you need to kind of uh, get on you, you need to go for another call so quickly i mean uh, now you talked about uh, that earlier you said uh, you will touch upon that you know the whole uh, i you talked about the behavior part of it so in terms of leadership that you know what kind of uh, leadership that you know this actually um, helps them to kind of you know develop um, and you know what are the kind of uh, certain things that they need to really tap into so what are your kind of uh, thoughts you know and how we will be able to kind of help them? yeah uh, so uh, see i'll use a few words which uh, uh, the co panelists yeah. have used yeah. uh one of the words that come to mind immediately is agility which anand used so there is a need to be agile here yes because the situation is such that if you don't do it now then i think uh, like they say the bus has gone i mean you have missed the bus so the idea is that yes we are facing a situation it's a tough time it's a it's a scenario where there is still a window of opportunity and the question is how do i take this forward so like i said i'll just pick it up from what i said earlier of letting go mm. so letting go is a big word uh, i mean even your scriptures talk about it i'm not going there i mean i'm sure everyone would have read it and all scriptures talk about it the one key element is i'll explain it in a simple way i mean i i'm holding this cup i mean you can't see it if the if this cup is full of water or full of some liquid the more liquid i pour into this what happens it just flows out okay. yes right so even if first thing that we need to understand in a leadership role is that can i empty some of it mm. so in my mind the cup is equivalent to right here can i empty some of the ideas some of the perspectives or some of the thoughts some of the beliefs some of the uh, uh, concepts which i came in with when i started this venture and it could also include people uh, that came along with me we gathered because we had a certain goal in front of us whatever that goal be mm -hmm. now maybe that goal has shifted 
and there are people in in the group who might not be comfortable with the shifting goal maybe with the uh, idea of pivoting itself so as a leader what do i do that is my first challenge do i go ahead do i actually uh, go ahead and say you know what all in it all for it or uh, it's all or nothing i mean either we all go together or we not don't go together so that is a dangerous thing because somewhere maybe i have a stronger belief about uh of this of this idea and its ability to pivot so i need to hold on to those thoughts and i need to say yes i can do this i can change having said that now how do i change i think that is where the entire exercise that we are doing now comes into play yes i have a feeling that yes i can do this having said that i can i mean some of it i can let go and rest of it i bring to the table have these conversations ask myself the right questions instead of uh, asking the mentors the question the mentors can help ask the person the person who is coming to the lab the right questions they can themselves ask the question because the answers are there i'll take another example uh, yeah. we talked about uh, i think uh, we talked about uh, how there is this uh, uh, everybody comes in asking okay what should i do mm. who knows best yeah i don't right i don't think any one of us sitting here can claim that we know how the other person should be only they know best what each one of us can do is provide our inputs and help that person understand okay what is it that uh, that is uh, that the what is the situation demand mm. so i have been working i'll give a couple of examples very quickly i have been working with a couple of organizations who who actually were profitable and uh, one was in the travel industry now we all know what has happened to the travel industry right i mean there is yeah. no travel so what do you do with the industry then so uh, they those people they are they were they came uh, they were profitable suddenly they ran out of they just there was nothing left two months ago we sort of came got together had this conversations and they came up with a bunch of ideas i'm not uh, i mean i can't share it here because i'm under I mean, yeah there is a there is a non disclosure of will there so they came up with something on their own to which uh, two of the uh, top leadership didn't agree to uh, and uh, so i sat with them and i sort of i didn't convince them one way or the other i sat with them worked with them made them sort of write out what makes them unhappy with this or what makes them uh doubt this and i asked the other guys to write down what they think will make this work mm -hmm. have that discussion come to a conclusion at the end of it i found one person said still i want to leave they left but then the business is actually started already now mm -hmm. so we see the green shoots within two months that's quick just two okay. months we are seeing the green shoots appearing very slowly uh, and the second one is my own business because i think uh, amit mentioned training sales training right i mean i was also into training and uh, development i was doing a lot of it uh, behavior stuff uh, coaching neuro linguistic programming all that stuff when lockdown happened i had no idea what was going to happen to me because how can you train i mean you, like i think a bunch of us all of us said unless we connect with people face to face yeah. we are right in front i mean there is this interaction it doesn't work mm -hmm. believe me when i tell you that it actually worked pretty well so uh, i might have been doing five sessions five training sessions a, a month uh, i'm still doing five actually i'm getting more participants into the uh, webinar uh, the only thing is that i have changed the things the way i was doing earlier when there is a room full of people i can actually speak with them i can interact with them here i just rework those very same exercises all those activities which i was doing uh, in the presence of everyone into more a distance uh, approach like okay. again like i'm quoting amit there is i think there is so that social distance thing never happens yeah. it's only a physical distance that's all that is so the moment i overcome that okay physical distance doesn't mean that i'm socially disconnected uh, uh, the idea changed so after sitting idle for a month and a half suddenly i am now too full so <laughs> that is where the situation is so i'll just give these two examples and say uh, the leader just needs to sit down and say okay things have gone wrong 
uh, they are, I mean, they can go worse. Now, yeah. what is it that I want right now? Is my purpose still the same that I, that was there when I started? If I, if it has changed, be honest, be aware, and say, oh, okay, it has changed. Let me change the purpose, yeah. then see what happens, and then go ahead. So that's all there is. So I think it's about acknowledging. One has to acknowledge uh, that there is a problem. Problem needs an answer. Yeah, yeah, Nandina, please. Well, I just like to quote uh, Khalil Gibran here: "The teacher who walks in the shadow of the temple, among his followers, gives not of his wisdom, but rather of his faith and his lovingness. If he is indeed wise, he does not bid you enter the house of his wisdom, but rather leads you to the threshold of your own mind." So, just Rats. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, I thought it's best articulated in Khalil Gibran. Forgive me, Raj. You said it. I think you put it succinctly. I think that was the best. Not yeah, Khalil Gibran. <laughs> you quoted him. That's okay. Yeah. Hey, Khalil Gibran is not going to uh, contest it anymore. <laughs> not now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Dr. Pradeep, you have uh, something uh, to kind of, you know, uh, add to this um, because you you kind of talked about one is the in innovation. We we you gave a slightly different uh, and uh, the new approach to it. Uh, but is there, you know, uh, from uh, the product or if you have certain examples, if there is something that you know uh, you have seen in your Startups that perhaps you know may help our entrepreneurs and startups. So, uh, what I would say actually is, uh, in times like this, it's also very important to be a little bit calm and patient, and uh, not get very badly agitated. Uh, you need to have that calmness and you know thought process uh, in how we want to address this problem. Uh, because one is to say we want to pivot, right? Uh, obviously, we want to pivot because things are not working. But the real big question is, uh, when do you exactly want to pivot? Do you want to wait for some more time to check it out? So the point where you will actually, the point where you are going to pivot is extremely important. Because I want to put a word of caution here is sometimes you may be reaching a point where you are just very close to success, but you don't see it. But that last five mile or the last you know, mile is kind of evading you. So as mentors, I think we could sense that. And many times um, I see that uh, founders or the people or entrepreneurs who are so focused that they feel that nothing seems to be working. But, the, but from an outside perspective, if you look at it, you can start sensing it, that these guys are going to make it just a, that small step and they're just missing that. Yeah. So uh, this is the point I would like to kind of add. I think, uh, you know, all the inputs are so, you know, I don't have to say much about it. All of them is absolutely relevant. Yeah. Great. So. I'll just it's add a, to this, uh, yes. if you don't mind, uh, Grish. Uh, so please, just please. Being from Dr. Uh, you know, uh, keeping composed and calm mind. I mean, this is something that I've seen with one of my clients. In fact, uh, since COVID, I've not visited. We've been over only talking over the phone and interacting so on. So he runs a chain of clinics. I can't give more information. And suddenly the clinics were stopped, you know, because patients cannot come. And uh, we were actually doing much better in revenues. And suddenly there was a crash and the revenues kind of collapsed. But I think he kind of took a step back. He said, TK, I mean, it's not there. Uh, first three weeks, four weeks when the, during the, you know, the lockdown was uh, announced, things were not working. They were totally shut down. You know, there was no movement. Only emergency services were running. And uh, I think he kept his composure and he was, I was surprised the way he kind of, you know, contained himself because obviously a lot of money has been taken up. We don't know what's going to be future, uh, whether services could be sustained and so on and so forth. But he kept his patient and slowly once the first uh, unlock happened he started putting his thoughts and during this period i think what he i have seen is he utilized himself so well to kind of see whether he can work a, now in a lean organization 
and uh, so when we were working together we had put in a lot of layers a lot of fat and suddenly we found that this was all fat this was not required and you could actually work with much leaner organization which uh, so it's not agile i would say but more leaner and uh, things start working slowly you know uh, last couple of months revenues have started coming and he's able to manage with these very select uh, amount of people he's kept his composure he's he's also started investing into technology so he took this time to invest into technology and that's the pivot i'm seeing you know suddenly from a very traditionally run business it's kind of become a technology run business uh, i had to really drill a lot of things during that time which you know went over is that but now it's kind of realizing no this is the way it could work this is the way we could actually have done and uh, i mean practically on a daily basis we are over the phone uh, i don't visit them physically uh, but what i'm seeing is there is a 180 degree shift in the way so adaptability is there but then how do you i i pivot and use this as an opportunity so it did not he did not let sink down you know his his mental ability and all that has actually gone much better and i think in the next uh, two to three months there should be a good recovery in the way things are working and we should see some uh, good results uh, starting jan so so that's another thing how you how a person takes these circumstances and you know kind of absorbs uh, and does not get shaken uh, we've seen unfortunate circumstances where people have uh, taken very drastic steps so that's not something one has to do you know this will come this will go and uh, how you turn them around there was this farmer who was facing problems suddenly he struck an idea and i read i think it's north of karnataka he started growing guava and he is earning now lakhs and lakhs right there was this one guy who lost his job and he started uh, he went back to his village said i don't know what to do suddenly an idea struck and he started making disposable uh, uh, your uh, plates and cups out of you know leaves and he is now minting money and he's he's uh, uh, you know gotten people given them jobs so guy who was working struggling is now doing so well so i think that's a frame of mind and uh, that's something that we as mentors can also you know drill down and help people and all the startups uh, who are going through this tough phase so yeah no i i i, I you know completely um, concur with what what you said i mean uh, this is also an opportunity to kind of uh, stay more calmer saner uh, and look at you know those things look at doing those things that you always wanted to do earlier perhaps you know there are organizations um which uh, actually need some amount of uh, digital transformation and we have seen in, in with respect to some of our own incubating companies uh, when earlier we kind of talked about those things you know, they said okay uh, not really needed i have people to do those things uh but again what used to happen usually when people did it okay there was uh, the, some of the uh, information or the data was really falling through some of those cracks but today you have such you know variety of uh, uh, tools platforms you know, which can give you an edge and like as you mentioned it's all about you know also thinking about the lean way of doing so uh, so that's where your digital transformation comes in and then you know you should look at today there are plenty of tools that are available and uh, how you can kind of you know co-op them into your business and then you know start seeing that productivity going up and don't and not despair that you know oh i don't have such a large team so with with a small team with these kind of good tools and resources and plus you know you have somebody to kind of you know uh, guide you and mentor you i i think you you will be definitely fine so yes um, i i think you know uh, anand if you do you have any perspective to kind of you know add to yeah. this sure just so, one so, uh, anand just excuse yeah. me i i think i'm now hitting the hard stop yeah. Oh okay please uh, forgive me excuse me uh, it was great being here look forward to meeting all of you individually uh, and i'll just once again quote amit i just loved that there's no social distancing it's just physical distance so let's let's meet up and uh, take this forward and thanks sure. for uh, thanks to girish and uh, 
Nanjula for making this happen. So, thank you. Bye -bye. My pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, Raj. Uh, very much. We'll we'll catch up and uh, thanks. Know, it was great uh, listening to some of those thoughts. And I I'm sure uh, all the startups and entrepreneurs who are going to, going to listen to this are definitely going to be, get benefited and they will join us. Thank you. Bye bye. Yes, Anand. Yeah. So, so what I wanted to say was, you know, that um, I think it's it's good that we say, you know, be calm, right? But but the life of an entrepreneur is very much challenging, right? And I know for a fact that there are quite a few of the guys who have not been able to sleep primarily you know they've been going through extreme anxiety right and that's mm -hmm. that's uh, so so i think we shouldn't belittle the fact that there is a large mental wellness issue also right yeah. uh, associated with this you know and i think that's where entrepreneurs can reach out to people who've been there and done that like you know the ginsu like nanju has you know i know he has maxed out his credit cards and he slept <laughs> he spent many a sleepless nights right and i have done that too i you know and and many of us who have been there right so so we can always guide these chaps right and people and say hey you know what it's not end of the world you know and and me and nanju have always had conversations around when is the right time to actually shut down a startup right because there is this psychological connection which we have with, with things we are very passionate about and that's also very it's a it's a skill you know when you actually call the shots as well in terms of saying hey you know what things are not looking great right so 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 i think you know um, i think we have to be very conscious of the fact that this is a very hard time uh, and that's what i was going to say it's a contrarian thing to what i'm hearing that you know it's it's not easy to be calm right when you're an entrepreneur and you know and you have to for example many of the younger guys right they've let go of careers let's say working for an accenture to do their own thing right and now they're at a point where they have to pay next month's rent right so and how do i now live right so it's very hard to be calm when those kinds of things happen true, true. but but that's where i think we can come in and we can say hey you know what you know max out your credit card or whatever right and no uh, and we can help them right through the process of trying to understand and i'll just share um so one of my classmates right so he's in in the us in seattle so he he ran into serious issues right uh, in a startup uh, they were trying to do a mentoring startup at that point right and uh, ran into serious issues and what he did was contrary to what people say he said hey you know what i can program right i can do software development so i'm going to now support my team by actually providing services right which is a very different thing right people say you should focus on your idea and things like that he said you know what times are such that i'm now going to have to do this right and he did that and he was able to uh, bring back the startup right so he understood that market cycles will always change right things will get better over a period of time he did that he sold his company after about five years for about 120 million dollars right so so i think you know the ability to so that's where we as mentors come in and say hey you know what it's okay to be not calm right it's okay to be paranoid right it's okay to to run around like a headless chicken but we are there to help you right we're there to help you bring that perspective to you give you the right interventions and probably help you make your business model better Right. And I think that's where Jinsa brings uh, serious value because I mean, Nanju, you know, we've we've looked at, I don't know, about 149 incubators and what they do kind of a thing. Right. And and some of the top schools as well. Like both of us have been there and given workshops and things. And we know it's a lot of it is glorified bullshit. Right. So I think that's where Jinsa is bringing a very, um, very wonderful perspective where it's all about getting your hands dirty. Right. And that's what we intend to do in this four week program, because four weeks is is very ambitious. Right. But again, if it's very tight and if it's you know, and if you put uh, it's a four week high pressure workshop, if you will. Right. And that's where we end up delivering significant uh, actionable outcomes, I think. So so I hope the startups get that and I hope they understand and and register more. And uh, and I can guarantee you that we'll provide them significant value. I just wanted to bring that uh, contrarian perspective that it's okay to be 
to be freaked out <laughs> because <laughs> that happens, right? Uh, uh, you know, Nanju, you know that Cisco chap, right? Um, so there's a guy who quit Cisco. He's he's worked for about 18 years in Cisco. He did his PhD from Stanford, all that. Now he's done his startup. Now he's calling me and saying, I'm not able to sleep the night. And then calm down. Things are going to get better, right? Uh, so he chose the wrong time to quit. He quit February 1st, right, from Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> and then COVID kicks in. So, you know, these things happen. So shit happens. You know, I think we're there to help um, uh, people, help people get, maybe get their head on straight, maybe help them calm down a little bit, but also hopefully provide them with a, with a different business value proposition they can take to the market and which the market will accept. Anand, wonderful perspective. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's uh, really very heartening to hear uh, Anand, uh, you know, out of the 149. Uh, you, you no, no, we, some... we in fact wanted to publish a report, <laughs> but then we figured we'll be shot down by somebody, so we just kept quiet. <laughs> okay. So thank you. I mean, thank you for those encouraging words. It's really, you know, motivates us to kind of continue the kind of work that we are doing and uh, with, with the support of uh, you all and your ideas and we can definitely you know keep uh, growing and better yeah no, no I just uh, was looking at business standards uh, one of the heading that says 37.8 percent uh, that is employment rate uh, falls to uh, 37.8 percent since uh, the recovery started in may Right, so this is supposed to be a positive news. So uh, let's make no mistake that there are no jobs, right? So entrepreneurial way is the way forward. So uh, yeah. if guys are uh, struggling and wondering if they'll just shut shop and find a job, don't know who they are going to fool. So uh, you know, the better they pull up their socks, find a way forward, and go forward with this. And we are there, ecosystem is there. There are a lot of people like us who want to help with. And opportunity is equally there. Correct. So, uh, thanks, uh, Nanjuna and Anand. Um, yeah, Anand actually uh, he summed it up, and you kind of continued. Well, uh, so I think, you know, uh, let me kind of conclude this. We have done it well. I kept it within an hour and a half with all those initial technical glitches and uh, with our first experience uh, with the air meet. Um, we have done it very well. Uh, thanks to each one of you. Um, so uh, the startup uh, entrepreneur or the founders uh, and what they can really expect out of Pivot Labs is basically I think as we mentioned, um, they need to, they can get their alignment uh, right uh, with, with our, you know, by discussing the kind of challenges, and get both the, both founders or multiple seeing a kind of a single vision that can be the biggest, biggest uh, uh, benefit out of this. And they can also redraw the purpose um, of the venture kind of you know uh, say that you know okay this is what we were doing and this was not working what can be the new way and what can be the new purpose uh, they can also realign the product uh, customer fit customer value um, uh, whether it is with uh, uh, identifying the opportunities that are lying around or you know kind of uh, looking at opportunities of uh, they should also look at we will also uh, dive deep into their business model and you know see how they can really pure and, um, in, in the, all this put together i think uh, this will help them to revive their venture by creating a certain sustainable uh, path uh, for a better uh, and a greater future so uh, i i think um, this we, we look forward to their participation. And, um, uh, I look forward to interacting with each one of them. It's been great. Uh, this 
half. And I'm really excited to you know, starting Pivot Labs uh, in the next week. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, so see you soon. And thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you.